Hello everyone, and welcome to the course installation and setup lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna do three main things. The first one is to show you how to download and install Anaconda. The second one is how to create a virtual environment using an environment file that we give you. And the third one is opening up the Jupyter Notebook system. As a quick note, if you're an advanced user and you're already familiar with some other development environment or IDE, please feel free to use it. There's no restriction on what IDEs you need to use. All the Python code that we show in this course will work on any IDE that can run regular Python. We do, however, recommend using our suggested environment, including the Jupyter Notebook and tools to avoid issues along the way, as well as being able to directly interact with the code. Jupyter Notebook is a great system. And if you haven't tried it out first, I would encourage you to try it. But again, please feel free to use any development environment you prefer. Also keep in mind, this lecture has resource links. Make sure to download the .yml file before starting this lecture. Okay, we're gonna start off by showing you how to download and install Anaconda. Anaconda is a distribution of Python that includes a bunch of scientific libraries that is really useful, especially for natural language processing. Go ahead and either Google search Anaconda download or go to the link here. I'm gonna head over to my browser and go to that link now. Okay, here I am at anaconda.com slash download. Keep in mind, this website does change its appearance from time to time, so if it looks slightly different for you, don't worry, that's totally okay. Somewhere along this page, you should see three download options, one for Windows, one for Mac OS, and one for Linux. So right now I'm filming this on a Windows computer, so you simply click on your operating system, you'll scroll down, and it should give you two options, one for Python 3 and one for Python 2. Go ahead and download the graphical installer, and depending on what kind of Windows machine you have, you may need to download 32-bit instead of 64-bit, but if you're on a more or less modern machine, it's more likely that you have a 64-bit. So go ahead and download that installer. If you're on Mac OS, simply click Mac OS and then download that installer. And if you're on Linux, you're going to also have an installer that you can download. Keep in mind, once you've downloaded that file, if you scroll down, there's a link telling you how to install Anaconda. I would highly recommend you check out that link. It changes depending on what operating system you choose. Basically, if you click on that link, It'll take you to the documentation on how to install, and there's specific step-by-step -step instructions for installing on Windows, installing on Mac OS, and installing on Linux. So essentially, if you have any questions during the installation process, there's written instructions detailing step-by-step -step how to install Anaconda and Windows on your computer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and download this file, and then keep in mind, locate wherever you actually have the graphical installer on your computer. Let's jump to me double clicking on that graphical installer. Once you've installed that, or once you've downloaded that installer, it's time to actually install Anaconda. So I'm gonna click open here, this executable file that downloaded for me. And then you'll have the Anaconda setup guide. You'll go ahead and click next, agree to the license agreement. I would recommend just installing it for just me. Then hit next, go ahead and select the default, hit next. Then eventually you'll have the advanced installation options. There's two advanced options here. You'll notice that one of them says add Anaconda to my path environment variable. If you've already installed Python previously, maybe you've already installed Python from python.org, then I actually highly recommend clicking and adding Anaconda to my path environment variable. I know it says here that it's not recommended, but if you have previous versions of Python, what ends up happening is when you download or install certain files, your computer gets confused as far as what Python version it should use, your previously installed Python or your Anaconda one. So if you've already installed Python in the past from python.org, then I highly recommend adding Anaconda to your path environment variable. If this is your first installation of Anaconda and Python ever, then it's actually not really necessary to do that. Um, okay, so once you're all done with that, go ahead and click install. All right, so by now what we've done so far is you've already watched the course overview lecture, which means you understand where to get the zip file of notebooks. And as we just went through, you've downloaded and installed Anaconda. So you downloaded that file, you installed the Anaconda executable. So what's next? Well, what we need to do next is first you gotta make sure you download the course notes.zip file from the course overview lecture. You can also download it from this lecture. It's the same zip file. It's just for convenience, we have it in both lectures. Then also remember to unzip the course notes. A lot of times students forget to actually unzip the file and that causes problems. Secondly, it's really important to remember where you actually unzipped the course notes to. And we'll walk through this in this lecture as well. So the other thing we need to do is set up our environment. 
So for this lecture, go ahead and check the supplemental resources for this lecture. It's a little blue folder icon that's next to the lecture title, usually over on the right hand side. And if you're having trouble with that, you can go ahead and check out the supplemental resources Udemy support article for more information on how to access it. So within that supplemental resource, there's essentially a link to a Google Drive doc, which is just a .yml file for you to download. So download this .yml file, and this is critical, remember where it is on your computer. And as a really quick note for Windows users who use OneDrive, um, I get a lot of questions from students saying they thought they saved it on their desktop, but then they're having trouble finding it. And if you're on Windows and you use OneDrive, what happens is you actually have two desktop folders. You have a user slash OneDrive slash desktop folder, and then a user slash desktop folder. So you can always check out the file properties to understand which desktop you're actually saving stuff to. So that's a little quick note. Okay, so once we've downloaded this .yml file, we're going to end up locating it using our command line and setting up our virtual environment. And this allows us to set up all the libraries we need for the course. And don't worry about learning this all through text. We're going to actually go through this all in the video in just a second. So to set up the environment, what we'll do is after we downloaded that .yml file, we'll locate it on our computer, we'll create the environment, and then we'll activate the environment. Notice how creating the environment and activating the environment are two separate steps. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we need to find our command line prompt. If you're a window user, you can either search your computer for CMD, that's the built-in command prompt, or since we've already installed Anaconda, we should also have the Anaconda prompt available for us. I would highly recommend using the Anaconda prompt. If you're on macOS or Linux, you can either use your built-in terminal, so you can just search for terminal on your computer, or if you've installed Anaconda on your macOS and Linux, you should also have installed the Anaconda prompt. So you can either search for terminal or anaconda prompt. Let's go ahead and go to our anaconda prompt now. Okay, so on my computer, I'm going to search for anaconda prompt. And you should begin to see it pop up. Um, again, if you're on Mac OS or Linux, if you, in case you don't see anaconda prompt pop up, you should also be able to use your terminal. So then go ahead and click and open up the anaconda prompt. All right, so here I am at the command prompt. And don't worry if your anaconda prompt doesn't say here base, that's totally okay. But in my case, I have a base Anaconda environment. And what we need to do is we need to download the .yml environment file and then locate it at the command prompt and then create our environment and activate our environment. So currently I'm located underneath my username. And what I need to do next is actually download the .yml environment file. If you download the zip file, it's provided there for you. But in case you don't wanna go looking for it or you wanna download it separately, where it's also provided is as a link, as a resource for this lecture. So just to show you what that could look like, keep in mind Udemy may update their supplemental resources in the future. So always look up on Udemy support how to get supplemental resources. But currently the way it works is right next to the actual little lecture, you'll see a folder here saying resources. If you click on it and expand it, you should see a list of resources. Currently, since I'm filming it, um, you won't see the zip file that you guys will see, but you should see here, link for .yml environment file. Go ahead and open up that link. I'll do it now. And when you open that link, you should see something that says PyTorch underscore course underscore env .yml. And this is the environment file. It'll say no preview available, that's okay. Go ahead and download this .yml file. So you will download it. And if we actually open this up and explore what it looks like, you'll see that this is essentially just has a name PyTorch ENV, which is going to be the name of our environment after we create it, and then has some dependencies, which are just versions of different libraries. So these are the various libraries we use throughout the course. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this environment and then activate this environment. And this environment is called PyTorch ENV. So you have this little .yml file. What I need to do is I need to remember where this is located. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this, and then I would suggest that you open up this and then say, not open, but show in folder. So if you click show in folder, it will report back to you where this file is located. And we can see .yml, right now it's under my username, underneath downloads. So I need to change directory at the command line to the exact same directory this .yml file is. Otherwise, these commands won't work. So please triple check where you actually downloaded and save this .yml file, especially if you're a OneDrive user. And if you ever have any doubts, you can always right click on this and then click on properties and it will report back its full file path here under location. So I can see its full file path there. Okay, 
So I've now downloaded the .yml file. I understand where it's actually located on my computer. This step is absolutely critical. And it's a step that I keep saying is very critical because there's no real way I can know where the .yml file is on your computer when you download it, since I can't see into your computer. So make sure you understand where this is actually located. And I'm going to close these windows and come back to my command prompt. So what we need to do is we need to change directory into the same directory where that file was located. And you can change directory by typing cd, and this is going to be the same no matter what OS you're on. At your command line, you type cd for change directory, and then you type in the folder name you want to go into. So we're going to go into our downloads folder, then hit enter. And if you accidentally go into a folder that you didn't mean to and you want to go back up a directory, you simply type cd space dot dot, hit enter, and you will go back up a folder or up a directory. So let's go back into cd downloads. And to make sure you're doing this right, you should be able to hit tab, and it will autocomplete for you then hit enter. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to restore the .yml file. This is also known as creating an environment. So the next step is to type out the following. And you have to type it out exactly as I'm doing here. You need to say conda space env space create space dash f. A lot of students forget that one, so make sure you type that in. And then you type in the name of the .yml file. What I would recommend is for you to begin typing the first few letters and then hit tab and see if it autocompletes the .yml file. If you do not get an autocomplete, then it's more likely than not that you're actually at the wrong location and you need to change directory and please triple check where this .yml file is on your computer. So just to show you an example of that, let's imagine that I, because this is a very common error between students, tried this exact correct command, but I was in the wrong directory. So maybe I tried it too early and I tried it here and I type out conda env create dash f and I try typing out pytorch env.yml or whatever it happens to be called and I hit enter. What's going to happen is I will get an error and it will say something like environment file not found. So it says, hey, sorry, I can't find this .yml file. If you're getting this error and you know you've already downloaded it, then it means you either spelled the environment file wrong or you're in the wrong location. So if you get this error, it means again that you either spelled the file name wrong or you're in the wrong location. So please triple check that. So I'm going to now go back to the correct location with CD downloads and then say conda space env space create dash f and then you should be able to tab autocomplete the actual YML file. Hit enter and it will begin to create the environment. All right, so after hitting enter, it may ask you for a prompt, yes or no, do you want to download stuff? Go ahead and enter Y for yes, hit enter, and it will begin downloading those libraries. Keep in mind, if you're on a corporate internet or you have your own firewall, you may actually get blocked or be blocking Anaconda from accessing those downloads. So go ahead and check your firewall just in case you get an error saying something like can't access or reach Anaconda. That's usually a private internet issue, and you'll have to figure that out either with your firewall or with your corporate internet. Okay, so now that we've created the environment, the next step is to activate the environment. And now you should pay attention to what's going on here on the left-hand side. Right now in my base environment, just my base Anaconda, what I wanna do is activate this PyTorch ENV. So what I will do is say, conda activate PyTorch ENV. Go ahead and hit enter. And what's gonna happen is, it may take a little bit of time, mine was quite fast, but you'll see here, now I have PyTorch ENV activated, which means I'll be able to access all the libraries here. And to confirm that, go ahead and type Python at your command prompt, after activation, say import torch, hit enter, and if that runs correctly, then you've successfully both created the environment and activated the environment. And then you can type quit open close parentheses to quit out of this. Okay, if you ever want to deactivate the environment, you can simply say conda deactivate. And now notice I'm back in my base environment. And as I mentioned before, you can do this from anywhere. So if I am not in downloads folder, so I'm not in the same YML file, I can still say conda activate PyTorch ENV, and it will still work. So now you don't really need to worry about that YML file. That .yml file is just for creating the environment. It's not necessary to activate the environment. The environment is now already existing on your computer. So 
the last thing we need to do is go ahead and connect to our zip file. So go ahead and download the zip file and then unzip it to wherever you saved it on your computer. And let's say I saved it to downloads. So I would just CD into downloads and then say Jupyter space notebook, which is the environment we'll be using for this course. And it's probably the most popular deep learning and data science for Python environment. So I'll go ahead and hit enter and you should see your browser pop up. Now, just in case your browser doesn't automatically open, and I would highly suggest using Google Chrome browser to access the notebook, you can always check out these URLs. So just copy and paste this URL here. Do not use control C because control C will stop the server. Instead, highlight and right click for copy. So you would highlight this and then right click and it will automatically copy it and then paste it. However, it should have just automatically opened a new tab for you. So you should have seen your browser open up to something like this. So right now I am underneath downloads and then I have my course stuff here. Now, in case you don't see anything here underneath um, my notebook list or wherever you happen to be located at your command line, what you need to do is make sure that you've downloaded the zip file from either the course overview lecture or this lecture. So to show you that what that would look like, let's say now here on my actual computer, I'm under this PC downloads my course stuff. I would have to make sure that I paste in the .zip file, and I have to also make sure that I extract it. So you can go ahead and extract it all here, and then hit extract. And you can either use WinRAR, 7-zip, or the built-in extraction features from Windows and Mac OS. I'll assume that if you're uh, technically savvy enough to do deep learning with Python, then you are probably technically savvy enough to unzip a file. So once this is done unzipping, you should have all the course notes, so we'll go ahead and check back here. Notice I have PyTorch Bootcamp. And coming back here to my browser, now it's updated not just with the zip, but with also the folder. Keep in mind, you can't access it if it's zipped up. You need the actual PyTorch Bootcamp. So once you open this up, it may be twice, PyTorch Bootcamp, PyTorch Bootcamp, depending on how you actually unzipped it. But then you'll be able to access all the course notes. And keep in mind, the slides are also linked for you in the course overview lecture. So then you open up one of these folders, click on any of these notebooks like PyTorch gradients, and we have all the good stuff. And whenever I refer to lecture notebooks, this is what I'm referring to. I'm referring to these notebooks that don't just have code, but also have tons of explanation, equations, and all this good stuff for you to help you in your journey about learning deep learning with PyTorch. Okay, and then once you're done, you can go ahead and just close all this. And then to kill this, just do control C. You may need to do it a couple times. It'll shut down the kernels. And if you want to deactivate the environment, you can simply say conda deactivate. Whoops, make sure I spell that right. Deactivate. There we go. And it deactivates it. Keep in mind, you'll always have to reactivate the environment if you want to use the course libraries. That is it. Thank you so much. I know that was kind of a long installation process, but hopefully you have no questions and you were able to set everything up perfectly. I will see you at the next lecture.